Friends of The Point, and welcome to this very special producers only episode of The Point. I yeah! Woo! Malcolm! Woo! Uh, I am the show's senior producer, Malcolm Fleshner, and today on the show, what we're going to do is give you a little more information about the show. We're going to answer some uh, questions viewers have sent in to us about what's going on, and we're going to try to explain what we hope to accomplish with what some people have called, notably Steve O, the best panel discussion show on the internet and maybe on Earth. Hmm. Some agree. <laughs> And with me to assist in that process are my, first off on my right is my fellow producer, Tom Hank. Tom? Oh. Yeah! Tom! Oh. Woo! I'm very, yeah. Woo. I'm very polarizing, apparently. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah, there's a, they're very polarizing for you, Tom Hank. No likey. Uh, <laughs> it's a mixed, mixed response. And also, our benevolent dictator and boss, executive producer, and audiophile extraordinaire, Steve-O! Oh. Everyone here gets a raise. Yeah! Everyone gets a raise. Raise, 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 raise. Everyone. All right. We're gonna we're gonna start calling him Steve Oprah. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for making the time to be here today. I know you're very busy with uh, with this show, and so <laughs> appreciate that you somehow are here. Uh, but we're gonna start. We're gonna get serious, and we're gonna start uh, with Steve, and he is going to tell us a little bit about the background and how the point got started, and uh, maybe tell us what your vision for the show is. Okay, so uh, YouTube has funded the show, which means that they have given us money to put the show together and bring it to the audience. And the reason why they did that is that YouTube wants to move on from being known as a place where you watch cat videos uh, to a place where you watch professionally made TV quality content. So they handpicked um, some of the top content creators, and the Young Turks is one of them. And um, they gave us the funds to start the show, and um, we couldn't be happier to bring this show together. And our vision for this show is to uh, have a place where um, we can have serious conversations about important issues. And we want to do it in a way that is uh, meaningful and um, not one of those you know, choreographed left versus right talking points that are screamed at one another. Even if we all agree on a topic, I want a nuanced discussion that really delves deep into the issues and um, you know, tries to arrive at some workable, practical solutions, um, or just have a good, fun conversation as well. So that's, that's my vision for it. And um, you know, we've been doing this now for about three and a half months. And the reception that we've gotten from the audience and from the big wigs over at YouTube has been phenomenal. Uh, We've had you know, very successful view counts, uh, but more importantly, uh, we've had uh, uh, great feedback from uh, the advertising community, uh, from, uh, from the YouTube executives, and internally, uh, I'm happy with the show. Uh, these two guys, uh, Tom and Malcolm, have done a phenomenal job bringing on guests, bringing on uh, guest hosts and panelists, researching the topics, promoting the show afterwards. So. Uh, I'm thrilled. Thanks. Tom, what about, uh, what about you? What's your, uh, what's your vision for the show? Or how, what do you think we can accomplish with the, with the point? I think that Steve summed it up pretty well. I think that just having good discussions that go deeper into the issues as opposed to like cable news shows, for example, where you have a three minute segment or a five minute segment and, and you hit the commercial break. I mean, every time we have a show here, we end up going way over what we allotted for the segment. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I think that's great because you get more and you don't have an arbitrary break point. So you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, our, our guests are allowed to actually make their point and talk for 5, 10, 15, sometimes as much as 20 or 25 minutes when Steve is hosting about a topic that, you know, if you watch a show on CNN or whatever, you'll see three minutes maybe tops. And you don't get to get into it at all, really. I mean, you barely get to scratch the surface before. Okay, we got to go sell some huggies. So, and you know, when we come back, there's you know the the circus is in town or whatever. So that is something we can offer, and you can't you can't just can't get that on broadcast television, almost essentially. Yeah, and also we can say bad words like shit and fuck. Yeah. We don't encourage it. Yeah. We don't encourage it, but you can say. I mean, if passions are running high and uh, people are worked up. We don't just cut off the, we don't say, oh my gosh, 
We have to cut to commercial break, so you, you know, wrap up and go. We let it breathe. I mean, if there's, if there's a good conversation, I never cut it. Uh, we just let it breathe. In fact, this show initially was supposed to be about a 20 to 30 minute show. <laughs> now we're an hour long show. <laughs> so um, I don't know, in, in two months we'll be four hours probably. Well, but one thing that I think we've demonstrated is that, I mean, when people look at our view counts, if we've got uh, an episode that has 25 or 30 or 50,000 views, that's not a lot compared to you know, the cat that placed you know, people off or uh, you know, Charlie bit my finger. But we're showing that tens of thousands of people are willing to watch a 45 minute show about serious topics on YouTube which I think a lot of people wouldn't think is really possible, but it is, clearly. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that YouTube is most excited by, that we have proved the concept on YouTube. Uh, everyone said that videos had to be short, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, six, seven minutes tops. If you show the entire evolution of dance, you can have five <laughs> minutes. Yeah, but um, our show has proven that um, viewers can engage in what YouTube likes to call the lean back experience, where they you know, just in front of the television screen that's connected to the internet or in front of their computer monitor and lean back and watch a 20, 30, 40 minute show and enjoy it. Well, now Tom, before we go on to the next segment, I wanted to uh, ask you, maybe you could talk about the revenue model. How, how are we making money or how are we supposed to make money on the, from a show on the internet and maybe explain to people why there are commercials? Well, obviously we don't have direct sponsors right now. Right, we don't, I'm not gonna hold up my, I, we have point mugs which are awesome, yeah. but I don't have a, a Corona here or, or a Heineken or a Starbucks coffee or we what have you. You, one. <laughs> you probably could, <laughs> but we'll see. Rick Strom said he could get us one. I don't see one, he just, he's a lot of talk. Anyway. So obviously the way we make money is the, the pre-roll ads, the mid-roll ads, and the post-roll ads. So those little ads that I know some of you guys don't mind because you get to see lots of, of great content that you're not gonna get anywhere else, so it's a small price to pay. Uh, some of you guys think it's a pain in the ass. I get it. Now, a lot of these ads are actually clickable, so, or you can click to skip them, that is. Right. Um, you know, we encourage you guys to not click skip so often. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you can, watch the commercial, support us. Uh, if you have to get up and go to the restroom and come back, that's, that's great. But if you can, you know, avoid the skipping of the ads, that's, that helps us make money, which helps us to do these shows. And some of the ads are excellent. You know, I actually find myself with the skippable ads, I get sucked into those. Like the non-skippable ones are usually, honestly, kind of a pain in the ass, but the ones that you can skip, like movie trailers and things, I, I ended up That's getting sucked in. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you have to skip them because some of these ads are ridiculously long. They're like five minute long ads. So after the first, I don't know, 45 seconds, I, I, I skip too. Um, but, but Tom makes a great point. Um, one of the great things about the internet is that they have this new model on YouTube where even the commercials are based on a meritocracy. So if it's a good commercial, you can watch it. If it sucks, just click skip and you can skip it. But try not, try not to skip every single commercial. Give it a chance. <laughs> Take your bathroom yeah. break. Yes. <laughs> we are not gonna sell out, this is the point. We don't sell out for anybody. I say skip it. No, no, I'm just kidding. All right, well, okay, let's move on. Let's, uh, um, the next segment we're gonna do is we're going to answer our viewer mail or viewer email or viewer hostile comment on YouTube. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, so let's go to our, uh, our first question. So the question is, I'm wondering if the guests are required to say point in every other sentence, sort of like wink wink, it's the name of the show too, get it? Lots of synonyms out there, yep, oh, and good show by the way. So um, what do you guys think, are they, or do we tell our guests, listen, try to work the word point in every third or fourth word that you say, Make it point. Is that, is that what we tell people? We don't make a point of what to tell them, but when you work on this show, you inevitably end up saying point way more than you would. Yeah, you tend to point that out. Is know. that your point? <laughs> no, right. You have the word point all around you. It can't help but be a suggestion. But for those of you watching at home, this is an opportunity, right? The point drinking game. Sponsored by Heineken. Sponsored by Corona or Heineken, we're still we're still in negotiation that they don't know about. But uh, <laughs> uh, but that would be, I mean, I think that would be a worthwhile way to spend your time when you're watching a segment that's otherwise somewhat dry about the death penalty or something. All right, uh, here's the thing. Uh, here's what we don't require people to say or do anything that they don't want to say or do. And the reason why we picked the point is that you know we're it's a panel show with three panelists 
and a host, and they're all gonna have some kind of point to make. And in the course of a discussion with four people, you wind up saying the word the point quite often, just naturally. Yeah. I, I, you know, I dare you to try this at home with your friends. <laughs> when you say, no, 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 that, that's not my point, or you'll say, is that your point? Well, that point sucks. Well, this is my point. It, it just gets said inadvertently, uh, just naturally, organically in the conversation. So it's one of the reasons why we, we picked the name. You know, it's, it's a good name or to have. Or when you're with your spouse, probably you say, would you get to the point? A lot. I know my wife says that frequently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but well, you can do this when you have your, your home, when we come out with a home version, the point home game. You can play along at home. You can have your drinking game. And you can see how often you say the point. OK, so next question comes to us from L-O-S-U-O-L. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. And the question is, where are, no, that's, uh, yes. Uh, so you're having a debate with generally liberal views. Why not have even just one conservative have their say? All right, let me take this question. All right, Steve's okay. going to field this one. This is uh, one of the most commonly asked questions that we have. And um, look, we would love to have you know, alternate views. It's not like we're trying to keep conservatives off. We try so hard to get conservatives on the show. They won't come on. They have, they have no interest, and here's why. Uh, their viewers don't watch the show. So there's no point in them coming on the show because it doesn't help their audience. And they don't want to come on the show and you know, get beat up by liberals who are armed with facts. Because uh, a lot of times conservatives uh, go on emotion, not facts. Okay, now I'm generalizing and I'm attacking them for no reason. Yeah, but, they're not here. But, but the point they're is, not going to be now, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Uh, it's hard to get conservatives on, and here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to get a conservative on who's going to come on the show and just spout talking points and scream at the liberals who respond with their talking points and scream back at the conservative, because that conversation sucks. If you can't even agree on the basic parameters of a discussion, you can't have a discussion. And we have uh, the flexibility of having a long show, but we can't have a show that lasts 26 days. We do have an hour, and, and we have time limits. So I want to you know, get to the point. I want to have a real discussion. And I find it hard to, have, uh, hard to do that when you have uh, you know, two entrenched sides. So uh, again, what I want is a real discussion. And if the disagreement is nuanced, that's fine. Uh, you know, we can all agree, for example, that the Lakers suck. But we, can, but we can disagree on why they suck. I could say, you know, Kobe's a ball hog, or Andrew Bynum is immature, or they need better coaching, whatever it may be. But that's a good discussion. Uh, much better than one, one, you know, if I said the Lakers suck, and he said the Lakers are the best, best team ever. That conversation is boring. So um, getting back to the question of conservatives, we want them on. We would love to have them on. A, it's hard to get them on, and B, it's hard to find the right conservatives to have on who are gonna have good, smart, intellectual debates. And not just a few talking points. I mean, yeah. this is my issue. The Lakers, it's sort of, you know, saying the Lakers suck versus the Lakers are really good. You can see the win-losses. For me, it's like if you were gonna have a discussion about the war in Afghanistan, and if you have everybody agrees that the war in Afghanistan is a bad idea, but you talk about whether we need to stay for you know, another year to try to work things out, or if we need to pull out right away, you can disagree about the, the path forward, even if you have basic agreement on the left side that the war is a bad idea and it needs to end. It, the problem is when you have one panelist who, who's saying the war needs to end, it's a bad idea, and the other panelist who's a conservative who is then saying you hate the troops or you want the terrorists to win, or spouting those sorts of talking points. That is not productive conversation, that, and you can get that anywhere else. There's plenty of outlets for that if you just want people to. That's why you're the lead producer, because mm. those are great points. Yeah, Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I largely agree with what you're saying. I do definitely think that if, if especially if our audience knows that there are conservatives that would be good, conservatives, libertarians, especially in the Los Angeles area, or people across the wherever that can send in a point that we can discuss if they're not afraid to have what will probably be a largely left panel you know, discuss it, uh, send in their points, let them know. Let them know on Twitter, let them know on Facebook, however you can, if you know them personally, say there's a show the point. They'd like to have intelligent conversations and debates and discussions with people across the, the spectrum. That's great, I'd love to see that. Absolutely. If you know conservatives who will be good for the show, have them submit a point. Have them come on the panel. We would love it. We would absolutely love it. Within reason. I mean, they can't suck. You know, I mean, 
Well, no, listen, that's true of we're liberals. A, we're opposed to people who suck. <laughs> listen, I mean, we don't just let anybody come on just because they're conservative. I mean, and we don't let just anybody come on because they're liberal. We want people who are going to be thoughtful. And so they, they have to qualify on a number of... Wow. All right, we're going to go to our next question, and it comes to us from David S. How can someone submit a video for a show? Do you have guests on by invitation only, or are you open to people submitting points to your, sh to your show? And the, the answer to that question is, right now we're not, right? We are not open to, to uh, unsolicited points because we just do not have the manpower uh, or the woman power to, uh, to go. I mean, if we, we get uh, hundreds and hundreds of submissions, we just, there's no way we can handle it. So uh, thank you for your question, David S. And do you guys have anything to add? No, the only thing I would add is what I said earlier. If there's someone that you want to see on the point, then I encourage you to send them a tweet, Facebook message, email, politely letting them know, hey, there's this awesome show called The Point. You should go on there and you know what have you. And build build an effort. You know, do what you can to get whoever you want, you know, to come on and let us know, let them know, and hopefully we can make it happen. All right, all right. Let's move on to our next question, and uh, this is this one comes from the Halo Hacks. And the question is, I don't like The Point as much without TYT members in the panel. This is better than others, but I want Jenk or Anna or even Steve. What do you mean, even Steve? <laughs> what? Am I editorializing? It should be especially Steve. Uh, yeah, but well, talk to the Halo hacks. I'm just reading what's on the board. Uh, so the, uh, the issue of who is on the panel, whether it's just uh, internal TYT people versus bringing other people onto the show, Steve, why don't you address that? Okay. Um, there's a reason why we do this. Uh, we actually rotate our hosts. Um, you know, Jank has been a host, Michael Schur, Jimmy Dore, John Fuglesang, Anna, Kasparian. Steve-O. Uh, I've even done one, I mean, uh, Chris Ryan. So uh, the reason why I purposely rotate hosts is that I want the show to be about ideas, not personalities. Um, I don't want to build a show around any one person. Um, no person is bigger than the show. The show is bigger than any one of us. Uh, that's the theory. And um, I want a place where we just have this great exchange of ideas and great discussions. Um, so do I want to have TYT members on at all times? Oh, of course not. However, uh, it will be that they will come on quite often because they're you know, readily available, uh, which, for, you know, which is half the battle right there. Uh, but as the show keeps growing and its profile gets higher, we'll have more and more people and hopefully you know, bigger names and bigger celebrities and more impactful people on the show. But um, uh, yeah, there is no agenda here to uh, uh, have TYT people on, at any given, on, on, on any given show. And quickly, to that point and to the last point about who... See, point, point, point. Can't help it. <laughs> Sorry. With uh, who people might want to see on the show, don't just think of offline people, but I'd also like to have more YouTube uh, personalities on. Obviously, we're not going to have Fred or Annoying Orange hosting a show because I don't know. Because they're too big. They won't, they won't return yeah, our calls. Yeah, that, that's why. The Annoying Orange. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have any arms, so he can't yeah, return our calls anyway. That, that's true. But, but seriously, if, if, if you guys have ideas for intelligent YouTube personalities that you'd like to see guest host or be a panelist or submit a point, let them know, let us know, and again, hopefully we can make it happen. Well, we had a point from The Amazing Atheist, yes, we can, we can which go to that goes to our next question. Our next yeah. question is question number eight. Let, uh, let's go to that. Uh, and that comes to us from Mage Slime, Maggie Slime, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, the question is, the response was very rude to The Amazing Atheist and they did not answer his questions well. That was a comment, obviously, not a question. And uh, Maggie Slime, I have this to tell you. You're actually right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so what happened on that episode is that the Amazing Atheist gave us this point about, basically, uh, without saying the word Electoral College, he was speaking out against the Electoral College. And for whatever reason, the, the host, John Fuglesang, who was awesome, and the panel that we had that day just kind of dropped the ball on that. They didn't really address his, uh, his point at all, and they just kind of uh, glossed over it and a couple of the panelists actually had some rude things to say about the atheist point. So um, it was one of those rare moments where I was considering stopping the show and saying, hey, you guys are missing the whole point of that video. Um, he's talking about the Electoral College and why it's bad. We should address that issue. Is the Electoral College a good thing, a bad thing? 
uh, how does that impact voters, uh, rather than just saying, hey, if you think your, your vote doesn't count because of the system, then move, which is essentially what the panel yeah. said. Unfortunately, uh, we can't you know, address every single issue intelligently or smartly. We drop the ball sometimes. Well, that's part of the issue with, the, with this show that many people may have with it is that we do drop the ball, and sometimes the discussion is not as fruitful as you would like. But that is the risk we run because we don't we don't pre-interview our guests, we don't tell them what to say, we just give them the show them the videos. We have some suggestions for them, but then it's really up to them, and it, sometimes that leads to a great discussion. Most of the time, it leads to a great discussion, really interesting and thoughtful. Sometimes, in this case. Not so much, which yeah, is disappointing. Yeah, and also with any kind of panel show, uh, the show is only as good as a panel and the host. So sometimes you have a, you have a panel that's kind of quiet or, or low energy, and you have a low energy show, which is maybe not that fun for some people. And sometimes you have a great, fantastic, awesome, super terrific panel, like today. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah! And by the way, that uh, Amazing Atheist uh, episode was the lowest rated episode. And I know we've only been around about three and a half months, but by far the worst rated yeah, yeah. hate parade uh, video. And, and it was a combination of they dissed Ron Paul yeah, and, they dissed, and they dissed TJ, who, and I, That's the per, I personally happen to agree with his point. I thought he made a good point, yeah, and no. I was excited to hear what the panel had to say, and I was honestly kind of shocked uh, that they dissed him and said, you can move. I didn't think that that was a Here, legitimate here's, answer. Here's what happened, I think is that, and I have to give TJ the Amazing Atheist credit here, he was the first ever point contributor to refer to the panel, whom he did not know who they would be or who they were, as motherfuckers. That, that was a first, and I think that might have turned them off a little bit. They might have been responding to that a little bit when they called him an they, asshole. I'm not saying it's okay, I just think that's maybe a little bit what happened. Yeah, they gotta get beyond that, but uh, you guys should check out, check out that episode. Yeah, check it out, it's a lightsaber, right? <laughs> they call it like a lightsaber episode or something because it looks like it's got a little bit of no, green it's, it's a it's the, it's the evil lightsaber. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like a Darth Vader lightsaber. Yeah, because if you see the, the like and dislike bar, it's like a tiny bit of green, green. and a huge <laughs> long line of red. Uh, it's actually, I think, the most hated video in TYT history. I don't know if you look at our main channel. I mean, I haven't looked. It's at close. All of our if it's not the, if it's not the number one most hated video that we've ever done, yeah. it's pretty close. It's I'll, the episode yeah. that, that killed Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yeah, and it, and you know what? The other thing that's that's unfortunate about that episode is that John Fuglesang was hosting, and I think that was his second time hosting. Yeah, it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And I thought he did an excellent job on his first time hosting the episode about Jesus and the Republican Party. I loved his monologue. It was actually my favorite single little snippet of the point, if I had to pick one thing out of the entire, all of the episodes, my favorite part, it was his monologue at the beginning of that episode. And so to follow it up with that episode where a lot of people just hated him because of, yeah. of the panel, you gotta give him a second chance. Go back and watch the Jesus and, and, and Republicans uh, and God episode, that was excellent. All right, well, actually, to that point about hosts, we can move on to our next question. We're gonna look at uh, questions six and seven. Uh, first, question six comes to us from uh, Asielo, O S A E L O, and uh, his comment, his or her comment was, "Jimmy Dore is the best. I love it when he hosts the point." And now we look at question number seven, and that is, uh, everyone on the panel was pretty smart except the host. He's a fucking tool bag. <laughs> and, and that was in and, reference, and, to and, and that was in reference to Jimmy, Jimmy Dore. Dore. So apparently, the uh, much like uh, <laughs> our coworkers about Tom, the audience response to various. <laughs> Hosts is mixed. Some people love certain hosts, some people hate certain hosts. Michael Shore got a lot of love, he also got a lot of hate. John Fugelsang got a lot of love, especially the first time, but he, uh, the second time, not so much. And even the first time, some people weren't so hot on him. So, no, everyone yeah. loves Fugelsang. No, no, no. Fugelsang is funny. I wrote a funny. number of them myself. He, he's a funny guy, he's handsome, he's knowledgeable. Tom has a massive man crush on him. <laughs> That's true. I'm, uh, I'm not going to deny it. John, <laughs> call me. <laughs> it's, good, it's good that your, your, your fiancé knows this before you actually go through it. Uh, so anyway, uh, so that's the thing about hosts. Some are going to love them, some are not going to love them. Let's, uh, and, and that's another reason why I like to rotate them. All right. Uh, I think that's all of our questions. So, uh, so we can move on to our next segment, which is uh, our favorite moments. Tom has already mentioned his. Steve, do you have a, a favorite moment from... Uh, from a past show that you'd like to? Well, 
I mean, as executive producer, asking me to pick one is yeah. like asking me which is my favorite child. Yeah. So let me tell you. Yeah. You, did, you, did actually uh, once, you did actually once tell me who your favorite child yeah, was. Yeah, because so. I do have favorite kids. Uh, anyway, um, my favorite episode was the w recent one with Jank hosting, and we had Annie Duke, Neil Brennan, and Kathleen Kim, and uh, we discussed slavery, and we discussed uh, cosmetic surgery in, in, um, in Brazil. And what, do we, what else did we discuss? What was the second point? The first point was about the human slavery. The, second, the third point was about cosmetic oh, surgery in Brazil. It, it was living wage. Oh, the living wage it, campaign. Yeah. At the and um, I loved that episode because there was such excellent chemistry between the panelists and, and the host. Um, there was this great moment when um, it turns out that all three panelists were vegans. Um, and that was inadvertent. We, we, didn't plan, this show? Yeah, we, we didn't plan that, but they just kind of, in the course of a conversation, they discovered that. And Neil, who's sitting in, in the middle, grabbed uh, Annie and Kathleen's hand, and they just raised it up together in, in victory, and because Jenk's a big carnivore. Uh, and they were saying, you know, vegans rule. Vegan power. Vegan power. And uh, it was like a fun, very spontaneous moment. And uh, Professor Kim, she's kind of a reserved person, so it was fun to see her, you know, holding hands with Neil Brennan and raising it in victory. Yeah. So that was, that was a great moment. It was a great panel, very informative, and um, I enjoyed it. And I, I challenge any other show to produce a more entertaining segment about human slavery around the world. It was <laughs> hilarious. So, I mean, you know, the gauntlet has been thrown down. What about you? Now, you already mentioned, well, but that, specific that segment. My, my yeah. favorite single moment at the point was John Fugelsang's opening monologue for the Jesus and, and GOP episode. But my favorite segment, I think, was uh, Jenk was hosting, and we had Rick Overton, a USC professor, and don't remember who the other panelist was, but I'm sure they were great anyway. Uh, and they talked about Hollywood violence. And I think it was, it, I'm sorry, not Hollywood violence, but uh, Hollywood propaganda. And I think it was Crispin Glover's interestingly delivered point, yeah. put it that way, and uh, where they talked about is Hollywood liberal or is it conservative? And you know, funny enough, it's actually one of our least viewed episodes of The Point. I'm not sure why. It remains a mystery to me. But it's not poorly rated. People who watched it liked it. And I think Phil Donahue was also on that one. He talked mm -hmm. about war. But I love the segment about is Hollywood liberal or conservative. There were some interesting th viewpoints that were presented in there that never occurred to me, that I never really thought of, that goes beyond the superficial. Of course, you know, Hollywood is liberal. Uh, it, it goes beyond that. And right. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that it. was a good segment. I, I don't know if I have a favorite segment, but uh, a couple that I would mention are one was in the, the Neil Brennan, Annie Duke, Kathleen Kim episode when we were talking about plastic surgery in Brazil. and. Annie Duke saying perfectly ingenuously, now I've never had Botox or any plastic surgery, and Neil Brennan goes, bullshit. So I go back and look, watch that, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that was a great comment because, I, was that a compliment or was that a diss? You know, we it, don't know, yeah. right? And he, he might be saying, you look so good, you must have had something done, or he's saying, no, you're just full of shit, you, you got stuff done. Well, so, Neil Brennan, obviously a big Herman Cain fan because everything he says is, two levels deep. <laughs> and, and real quick to that point, I do have one of my pet peeves is when beautiful women disavow plastic surgery, like Julianne Moore. I'm not especially into Julianne Moore, but She's whatever. no John she, Fugel saying, let's just no, say that. Definitely, definitely not. Look, but, I saw, I, I ran into Julianne Moore at a Staples Center, uh, not, not to Staples Center, but a Staples store, and- um, <laughs> A little different. <laughs> God, she is just, Devastatingly beautiful. But if you have great genes and you're going to diss people who don't have great genes and they decide to get plastic that? surgery, well, I don't know if she specifically has. I'm making a. I think she may have said some, maybe it was some other celebrity. It may have been her. But just the general point of when nat, women who age really well and they have great genes and they take care of themselves, and they look great, and then they're they're like tut tut about people who don't aren't in that. It's easy for them to say. Let's put it that way. By well, the way, that same episode with uh, with Neil Brennan uh, and uh, and Jan Hosting. The, f the part that cracked me up <laughs> is when, uh, when they decided, when Jenk decided arbitrarily, of course, that everyone should only get two plastic surgeries. Yeah. So you have, two, you have two chances to look hot. <laughs> if that doesn't work, just give up because yeah. it's never gonna work. And, uh, and then Neil made this very funny joke about how he was uh, born beautiful on the inside, but he stuck with this. Yeah, this mess. And, and to fulfill his his true destiny, he needs to get as much plastic surgery as possible. It, it was great. But it was it was yeah. in context of talking about being a transsexual exactly. and getting you know. So uh, the other the other briefly the other moment that I that shown for me was on an episode where uh, Keith Knight, who does uh, K Chronicles, his uh, comic strip, he was talking about 
uh, Occupy Wall Street or some of, you know, some of the, I think it had to do with the Occupy movement. And Jank was saying, you know, we support them, but we're nonviolent. We don't believe in d destruction of property and so on and so forth. And Keith, like, underneath his breath almost goes, yeah, sometimes you got to break a few windows. <laughs> There's something like that. And Jank was like, oh, no, 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 because no, Jank's very, you know, he's got to maintain a public persona where you got to disavow violence or any sort of destruction of property. And Keith's like, eh, you know, I'm. And, and it was great coming from Keith because uh, he's like a really kind of a quiet, uh, kind of reserved, yeah, almost soft shy, soft-spoken guy who is probably one of the least violent people you would, you know, you could ever meet. But he's like, yeah, break a few windows yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you got to break a few windows. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if you if there's a broken window anywhere, uh, that you Blame know, it on Keith. yeah, it's Keith Knight's responsibility. All right, so let's move on. We're gonna uh, we're gonna introduce the the folks who you know work toil behind the scenes, tirelessly, and for hours and hours on, on end, who are usually go without being appreciated. We're gonna break that rule today, and we're gonna appreciate them. First, we're gonna start with Rick Strom, who's let's, been let's go to jeering and cheering. Let's go to Rick Where's Rick? Can we, get the, can we get a shot of Rick? Can we zoom in on Rick back there? And Rick, can you tell us what you do for the point, and, uh, and how long you've been doing it, and what you're looking for in a mate? What, what I'm looking for in what? Yeah, then go what ahead. What was that Just, last part? Um, I mean, we've all been on since the beginning, and um, I basically run the audio, and you could even, I don't know, you could label me a producer, but I mean, I don't know. So, so then, uh, so I mean, basically, I, I run the audio, and I work behind the scenes with Bart, Tim, and Mark on the show. Yeah, also, Ricky makes coffee right before the show starts for all the panelists, and Ricky makes some kick-ass coffee. Thanks, Ricky. <laughs> I feel like that's supposed to be a compliment, but I don't know. Yeah, that's it's one of those. It's not a compliment. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with him. That's I'm a, fucking that's with you, Ricky. Totally. By the way, youtube.com slash TYT Sports. You know, that's that's uh, cut that. All right, get him that's, out of that's there. That's that's out that's out Steve O right. with the, uh, the Neil Brennan style compliment there yeah. for Rick Strom. All right, uh, so the other thing that Rick gets to do is he basically, because he's, the, he's a sound guy, he gets to grope all the guests. For good or ill, he gets to, you know, because he mics he, us all up. He mics up. them up, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay, next, we're going we're gonna to meet Bart. Do we have a camera for Bart or an audio? Bart, come over here. Here he comes. Here he comes. Are you going to go over there? Go, go get him somewhere. Here he comes. Bart, briefly, can you tell what you do on the point? And, uh, I am you know? uh, basically uh, assisting the production of the point. Uh, also help set up the set. Uh, just get everything uh, arranged and uh, coordinate with you guys as far as the, um, time and stuff like that. But Bart also has like a day job and comes in, drives. How far do you drive in to do this? Um, I work, my day job is I work at a film laboratory where we do film restoration and preservation, uh, which is up in Valencia. And I drive about, um, it's like about a 40 mile drive from there to here. Uh, I usually drive during a rush hour, five o'clock. So it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to get here. All right, cut his mic. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, so Bart, Bart is very instrumental in setting up this <coughs> the set, and um, this is where we film a bunch of shows. So uh, we have a very busy schedule, and Bart is, you know, the guy who makes it all run on time. So thanks for Bart for, you know, for rushing down here and helping it all happen. Let's go to Mark. All right, next we have Mark, who's the director. Mark, register. Can we uh, can we register Mark? On the <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't have anything to say, but he's. He's very surly today. He's our resident pervy wanker. He's, he's single. He's single. He's ladies. available, ladies. All the single ladies out there viewing the point. Uh, all right, so Mark, that he's and he's switching all the camera shots. All right, see, Mark is a very handsome guy. He's a former actor, former performer at SeaWorld. Uh, he can do one-arm push-ups. Uh, he's very buff and strong, and he can do uh, all the tech stuff around here, audio, video, he's everything. Oh. And uh, he's grumpy right now because he's been here all fucking day. Wow. Wait, and let's let the audience guess uh, who, which actor, he, should we give him a clue or no? Just which actor he looks like? Should we give him some little clue? No. On, on Showtime. Okay, that was the clue I was gonna give. Yeah, look at him. Imagine blood dripping down the side. Nah, I totally gave it away. Yeah. All right, we'll let you, we'll, you can put in the comments what you think, uh, who you think Mark looks like. And finally, on our jib camera, we have the redoubtable Tim Collins. Can we get, can you get yourself? Jib set, jib set, jib set, jib set, Spinning, spinning, spinning. He's gonna break the jib. There's there Tim. Jib set, jib set. Coney. Okay, yeah. Tim is a very important part of this point team. Uh, Tim does all the graphics. He does all the e editing afterwards. So whenever you see a misspelled uh, graphic, it's, it, that's Tim. 
that, that's Tim. Um, wow. <laughs> he also created the intro and picked the music. So if you if you like it, let him know. And if you hate it, let him know. He's on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's one of me too. One, one of me too. By yeah. the way, he if only there was someone who could put up a graphic to show what it was. But who's gonna do it? No, he might misspell it. Something that oh! should be noted. Hey guy. <laughs> so something that should be noted. He also picked the porn music to the porn one. When the monkeys were having sex on the point. Okay, yeah, for the sex episode, they were bonobos. Come on, doesn't anybody learn anything on this show? All right, so let's, we've met the crew. What, basically what, what we've tried to do is get across the fact that we need women. There are too many guys. This is one big Okay, you know thing. what, we, we lost one woman. Uh, she was here earlier. Hello. Daisy. That's right. H how do you pronounce her last name, Hazik? Quite possibly. Okay, Daisy. Daisy is our makeup artist. She's beautiful, and she tries her best to make us look as good as possible, which is, you know, with Tall order. mixed success. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's she's great. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say thanks to my entire uh, Point team. I could have asked for a better crew. They work really hard. They do great work, and they're great to work with. So thanks to all of you guys. Woo! Yeah. This is this yeah, is for you. Ourselves. Yeah. Lord knows if, if if we don't, nobody will. No, but if, I mean, if you're watching this and you've gotten this far through, you must love this show also because That's to put up with. Or they just skipped ahead to yeah, see something to get to the part where we introduce everybody. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, next, I want to reach out to everybody. We already sort of mentioned this a little bit, but we do want your involvement in the show. And if you, as Tom said know people you want to have on the show, let us know, that's great. You can reach out to those people and you know, put uh, at uh, the point TYT on the Twitter, you know, uh, if you tweet out to them. Uh, but also, if you know somebody, if you're, uh, if you're besties with Matt Damon or George Clooney or Oprah or the Pope, you know, <laughs> let us know, give us their email address and we'll try to get them on the show. I mean, uh, you know, right? Also, uh, you know, interact with us through our videos. If you like what you see, Comment. If you don't like what you see, comment. As you can tell, we do read the comments, and we can't read them all, obviously, but we try to read as much as we can, especially uh, Malcolm, and uh, we will try to address those uh, issues whenever we can. Yeah, and also I should make one brief mention about the comment section, is we do police it to an extent, so if you don't like that your comment has been deleted, then you should not be calling the people who are panelists a faggot or a nigger or a cunt or whatever, because that's just gonna get deleted, because that's, the, the, these, are, these are our guests, and we invite them to come on, and when they watch the video, uh, it's extraordinarily rude to have people commenting and calling them names like that. We encourage you to debate each other, to get into the issues, say your piece, we love that. But uh, if you can't do it without saying something hostile like that to about one of the panelists, then your point well, probably isn't that good anyway. Yeah, uh, also, look, you can say something like, uh, Tom Hank is completely full of shit, he's wrong about everything, I hate, yeah. I hate all yeah. of his, I, I hate everything he said on the show, uh, he sucks. That's fine. Absolutely. But, but if you say Tom Hank is an ugly dork, not fine, gone. Because uh, that's not really a debate. I mean, you're just, you know, being a mean, hurtful person, calling someone names, those comments are gone, but a comment, uh, doesn't matter how negative it is, that goes to the merit of what's being uh, discussed. Those are fine. Tom Hank rocks. Besides, Tom, saying Tom Hank, I mean, what, you know, we, we already—that's already obvious. Those sort of comments. I mean, we already know, right? I'm gonna go home and cry. Mm. You cry All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's uh, the the last thing I wanted to do is uh, mention that the point is looking for an intern. We would love to have help with booking and coming up with ideas for points and reaching out to people. There are so many great potential point makers out there that we don't have time to chase them all down. But, so we'd love to get an intern who can help us with that, who's up on pop culture, but also up on progressive issues and knowledgeable and has time, you know, understands uh, the internet. If you're familiar with the internet, that's good. Uh, to, but you got to track down people and how to contact them and all that sort of thing. It's just time consuming, but we would love to have like a college student who wants to get some, you know, get, get a, a, a way to help out on the Young Turks because a lot of people who work here started as interns. I can't promise anything, but if you are interested, then you can email me at tytquiz at gmail.com and uh, let me know who you are and why you think you would be a good candidate and uh, maybe we can set, uh, set something up. So, Do you have restrictions on location? Do you want someone in the Los Angeles area, or can they be anywhere? No, this can be anywhere. Because the the be internet most... works anywhere, Tom. 
I thought it was a series of tubes that was only in. Never mind. You have to be able to navigate the internet. From, so you have to have, yeah, you do have to have no dial-up. But, uh, but yeah, so that, you, just, you just have to be in. Yeah, maybe a phone would be good, too. That'd be good. Phone, internet access. Really. All right, let's wrap it up. All right, so let's, uh, thank you. Anyway, we do appreciate your watching. I hope you learned something about the show and continue to watch it. We're going to have some great episodes coming up. I don't want to... Uh, tease them too much because you might be watching this after we've had the shows, but some great guests coming up in the next couple of weeks And we think you're gonna be really pleased with them and thank you guys for being on the show We'll do it again if you want us to maybe and uh, answer more some more questions in the future but Thank you for watching the point and keep watching the point from here on out. Thanks a lot. Thanks guys